Okay, hey everybody, it's Steve Mueller, and I just wanted to uh, say hi and record this little video greeting here uh, for you. It's actually not, um, you know, sort of a standard video greeting. Um, I had some folks that have inquired for quite a number of years now to have me record on video my recollections of many of the celebrities that I came to know or that I you know had experiences with and uh, so you know that's a whole lot of folks <laughs> anyone who's read my book uh, Almost Famous my autobiography uh, and that was already 11 years ago are you know are pretty much aware that I've been fortunate enough I guess to no tons of celebrities over the years and so um, you know I can't discuss every single person I've bumped into because that would you know that would take hours and hours and hours but um you know I took uh, some questions online and um, you know some people suggested certain individuals that I could talk about or discuss my recollections about so uh, one of those folks uh, that I was asked to speak about was uh, the late Chris Farley, the fantastic uh, actor comedian Chris Farley. And so uh, that's what I intend to do here. Um, I'm going to talk about my recollections of Chris. So um, I'm just speaking off the cuff. I don't have anything prepared here. Uh, I'm just you know speaking off the cuff and just uh, discussing my recollections of Chris um, I only knew Chris uh, I guess I could start off by saying I only knew Chris for a short period of time and that was during the last year of his life that was in 1997 it's now 2021 so a good number of years later uh, almost 25 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long. Um, anyway, so um, back then, um, you know, I, how can I say, I was sort of a celebrity whore, I guess you could say, um, because what I mean by that is because basically anyone who was famous in town, um, I'd go hang out with them. Anyone I had an opportunity to hang out with, I would. Um, you know, because I just thought it was cool to hang out with famous people, and so I did all the time, you know. And uh, one of those folks that I had an opportunity to meet and get to know was Chris Farley, and that was because Chris was living in Chicago. Uh, he was living in the John Hancock building downtown. I didn't know that at the time. Uh, I, I don't think, a, I think a lot of folks didn't know that. Um, but I was invited, uh, you know, a couple times to go hang out with him, and I did. And uh, I got to know Chris pretty well, and we sort of hit it off. Um, and then he later invited me to go uh, up to his condo on whatever it was, the 60th floor or whatever of the Hancock building. And so I did once. Um, I was only in his place one time. Um, but we you know it was really interesting um, I remember when I was there uh, I said to Chris I said gosh you know everything is sort of like a, a clown motif I mean he had clowns everywhere pictures of clowns figurines of clowns all sorts of things you know with a, a clown theme to them and uh, <clears throat> excuse me and so uh, I asked Chris about that and he kind of chuckled and he said, well, he goes, you know, Steve, he goes, everyone loves a clown um, because they make everyone happy. They make everyone laugh. And, uh, and I thought, yeah, you know, that's true. That's, that's, that's very true. Um, and I, it wasn't until later after he had passed and I heard the circumstances of his death that I thought back to this earlier conversation that I had at his place with him and uh, that's when I realized you know Chris wasn't just talking about his household decorations uh, when he said what he said about uh, clowns you know um, 
and and then he added he said you know everyone loves a clown they make everyone happy they make everyone laugh everybody loves clowns um but then he added he said but clowns are all very sad on the inside um they're they're all very very sad uh lonely people and i didn't think anything of it at the time until after he had passed and i thought back to this conversation and that's when it became apparent to me that he wasn't just discussing the decorations in his place he was he was talking about himself you know when he said that uh everyone loves a clown they make everyone happy um but they're all really sad and and lonely inside and he was talking about himself and i didn't realize that at the time but um yeah it's sad but that's true and uh i know he felt that way because he he told me he did um you know not in those words in this analogy that he he sort of told but um you know my my other recollections of chris uh i mean he was always in character i think he always felt he always had to be funny he always had to make everyone laugh um you know he always called me little buddy he he rarely ever called me steve it was always like hey little buddy um you know in keeping with his character from snl um you know but he he was always hilarious he was always funny um you know, but I gotta say, more than anything, I think um, Chris should be remembered for two things. One, for the amazing talent that he was. He was amazingly talented, amazingly funny, and he brought joy to millions of people. And the second thing that not a lot of people realize and not a lot of people know, which I believe he should be remembered for, um, is the fact that he was without a doubt one of the most down-to-earth, um, kindest, uh, just nicest, most approachable people you could possibly ever meet. And I really, truly mean that. Um, I mean, really was. Um, and, uh, but anyway, there, there's a bunch of recollections, uh, of Chris I could discuss. Um, but the one I think that people want to hear the most about, which I alluded to in my book, Almost Famous, you can Google it and you can buy a copy if you want. Um, but basically, I uh, allude to this story in my book, and um, that is, uh, it's a story about the last time that I saw Chris. And it's significant, I think, because um, it was right before he died. I mean, literally right before he died. It was on December 14th. 1997 and I believe he passed away on the 17th or 18th uh, of 97 I believe the 17th uh, so th three days after I had seen him and talked to him last and um, you know it, it was really 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 something so I've never told this story before so I'll, I'll tell it here um, I received a call from a friend of mine that was hanging out um, with Chris that night um, I don't want to mention names, but, um, anyway, um, and Chris passed away three days later. I know the details of his passing are very public. Um, as everyone probably knows, he spent the last three days on a massive drug binge, um, in the company of, uh, a lady, a stranger, um, who left him on the floor to die, uh, which is ter horribly sad. Um, but a lot of people said to me over the years, oh, you're probably the last person to see him alive. And I have a, a photo from that moment me, of me and him together. Um, and I thought, ah, I wasn't the last person to see him alive. But aside from the lady that he spent the last three days with, now that I think back to it, yeah, I, it's quite possible that I was the last person to see him alive because it was on December 14th. He went on a three-day binge and he died three days later and I saw him at five o'clock in the morning that day um, I was called by a friend said hey I'm hanging out with Chris do you want to come down to the Hancock you know hang out and I, I was so tired I was still awake I hadn't gone to bed I was out partying with my friends back then that night and so I thought oh sure why not and so I drove down there there was no traffic downtown Chicago was like a ghost town and I was about to go in, and Chris comes walking out of the Hancock building. 
and uh, his appearance. I mean, I I think he was ready on, you know, starting his his binge, his uh his his final act, so so to speak. Um, just to t tell you how naive I was at the time, I didn't hang out, you know, with people that were drug addicts or that did hardcore drugs. So I didn't know the signs, I didn't know the symptoms, uh, or I should say the signs of it. And um, Chris came down and it was brutally cold outside. It, like I said, it was like five in the morning, 4.30, five in the morning. Uh, Chicago was like a ghost town. There was nobody on the streets, nobody around. And me and Chris are just standing out there, just, you know, talking to one another. And uh, he was joking around and, and he did his whole like routine. He's like, uh, hey, little buddy, what's going on? And he's like, Steve, for the love of God, you know, do you know what time it is? Go home and go to bed. And we laughed and I said, yeah, I, I, I will. And I did. Um, but I wish he had gone home and gone to bed. Instead, he went out. He had called for a limousine, which we waited for that was going to pick him up. I didn't ask where he was going at that hour. Every place was closed. He may have been going to pick up his lady friend that he spent his final hours with. Um, that's quite possible. Um, but uh, his appearance, I mean, he had glasses on. Um, he had a sport coat on, and it was brutally, brutally cold outside. Uh, a December night in Chicago, I mean, and it was brutally cold freezing i had my full length leather jacket on leather coat and he had on a sport coat and nothing underneath it he was bare chested and not only bare chested he was drenched drenched in sweat and i thought like oh that's a little bit weird but like i said i was so naive i didn't know the signs of you know what should have been obvious and obviously he was out of his mind at the time and um you know, partying, and, uh, I mean, he was drenched in sweat to the point where I thought, like, oh, I wonder if they have, like, a workout facility upstairs, maybe he was working out, um, because that's what he looked like, I mean, just drenched in sweat, bare-chested, you know, and it was freezing, below freezing outside, and, uh, we talked for a few minutes, uh, actually, a police squad car pulled up, and, uh, they, they recognized him and they called him over and Chris, you know, ran over, stuck his head in the squad car, was cracking jokes with the cops and, uh, you know, they all laughed and then they drove off and Chris and I uh, stood there for a couple more minutes till his limo arrived and he's like, all right, take care, you know, I'll talk to you later. And um, we actually snapped a quick picture um, with the, the friend that, you know, had uh, called me down there who who left before Chris left and uh, Chris left alone in the limousine and I remember it being December 14th because December 14th was my father's birthday and um, and in light of what happened three days later I was absolutely stunned to hear that he had passed three days later it was all over the news all over the media and I know it sounds crazy, but my first reaction, uh, because I had his phone number, was to want to call him. I picked up my phone, like, to call him, and then I thought, wait, that's crazy. I can't call him. He just passed away. Um, and I actually drove downtown. I don't know what possessed me to do that. I drove downtown to the Hancock building. Um, I, I guess I, I, there's nothing I could do, but I guess I just wanted to be, feel closer to the situation somehow, or, you know, because I, I was... I was so just sort of devastated by hearing the news and I actually saw the uh, the hearse come up the ramp and back um, which obviously had Chris's body on board um, so it, it was just a horribly sad occasion but um, you know what what people should remember most um, and it makes me sad a lot of times to you know speak about Chris in light of him passing away in the way that he did at such a young age so tragically um, but people should remember that he was the most down-to-earth nicest funniest just kindest person you could possibly meet so approachable so down-to-earth and most importantly he was just 
an amazingly talented guy so funny and uh, he brought joy and laughter to millions millions and millions of people and that's what he should be remembered for and that's his legacy so I just wanted to share my uh, recollections about Chris and I uh, hope you enjoyed this and um, anyway I I didn't even mention about myself on the, the beginning of the video uh, my name is Steve Mueller uh, I'm from the Chicago area uh, I've been a publicist that's represented a number of celebrities over the years but I never represented Chris in fact I was not yet in the field working in the field as a publicist or as a celebrity publicist at the time when I knew him I was just his friend and um, but I, I wanted to share my story about Chris and um, hopefully everybody remembers him for all of the right reasons because he was just a great guy and an amazingly talented uh, comedian so you know God bless him and may he rest in peace and uh, thanks everybody for listening to my story about Chris thanks take care